Hello and welcome to this video. Today I want to talk about loops. So what is a loop? A loop is a certain type of control structure that lets you execute a block of code as long as a specific condition is met. Loops and conditional statements like if, else, else, if and the switch statement are the foundation of all control structures for programming languages. Let's start with the while loop. The while loop is a simple loop that just loops through a block of code as long as a specific condition is true. And just to make sure everyone understands what I mean with loop through, loop through basically just means that the specific block of code that we are talking about is executed over and over again until the condition is not met anymore and then the execution of this code block stops and the execution of the code below that code block will continue. As an example, let's start by just printing the numbers from 0 to 10 to the console. To do that, let's declare an integer and initialize it with the value 0. Now we will write while an opening round bracket followed by the name of our just declared integer variable followed by plus plus. And remember that means that we are using the postfix operator and the postfix operator is returning the value before the increment. That means for the first run, it is returning zero, even though we have already incremented our number to one. Okay, even though the number is one, it will return zero because this is the postfix operator. Okay, let's write the rest of the condition and the rest is smaller than 10 and the closing round bracket. So why smaller than 10? Yeah, obvious because we want to print the numbers from zero to 10. Now let's define a code block here with an opening and closing curly bracket and between those two brackets, so in our code block, you can write as many commands as you wish. And all of these commands will be executed over and over again until the condition above is not met anymore. Okay, let's write our debug log call in here and I want to go over this one more time. So. It will start with the while loop. The condition will be tested. If it's false directly, then the code block below will not be executed even one time. That means the code block below can also be executed zero times if the condition is directly false. But for now, the condition is true. So the code block below will be executed the first time. And then it will check the condition again. In the condition, we're using our number plus plus. That means our number variable will be incremented. So then the condition will be checked again and it will be checked 10 times and after the 10th time it will be not true anymore and then it will leave the while loop and the code block below will not be executed anymore. But before that the code block would be executed 10 times. Okay, let's execute this and try this out. We are expecting the numbers from 1 to 10 to appear in the console and let's see and as you can see it is printing the numbers from 1 to 10 in the console. But if you remember correctly, our goal was to print the numbers from 0 to 10 to the console. That means we could just change our variable and just start with minus 1. That would be an easy solution, yes. But I want to use this opportunity to show you the next kind of loop and that's the do while loop. The do while loop is basically the same as the while loop, but with the small difference that it will execute the code block once before even checking if the condition is true or not. After that, it will continue to the while loop and the while loop will execute the code block over and over again until the condition is not met anymore, just like the normal while loop would do as well. That means, if you remember correctly, I told you the normal while loop can also be executed zero times if the condition is not met at the beginning, but the do while loop will always execute the code block at least once. So let's change our while loop to a do while loop and like that it should be printing the numbers from zero to 10. That means it should print the number zero as well because the code block will be executed one time before it will check the while condition and also execute the number plus plus inside the while condition. That means zero will be printed before we execute the first number plus plus. So zero from 10 should be visible in the console. Let's execute this and try it out. And as you can see, the numbers from zero to 10 are visible in the console. Perfect, now let's take a look at the for loop. 
The for loop is a loop that uses three statements inside the head of the loop. The first statement is executed only one time before the execution of the rest of the loop and the code block. The second statement defines the condition for executing the code block inside the loop. And the third statement is executed every time after the code block was executed. Each of these three statements can be left empty, but you still need to write the semicolon after the first and the second statement. So you can't leave the semicolons, but you can just write nothing and the semicolon, then nothing and the semicolon again. And behind the second semicolon, you can also write nothing. So you can leave all of these three statements empty, but you can also just leave one or two of these two statements empty. In case you leave the second statement in the middle empty, then you have an endless loop. Sometimes a programmer wants an endless loop and wants to break it with the break command or exit the program or just return the function with the return command. And I show you the break command later. But basically why you need this is sometimes, for example, you want to do a task an endless amount of times and only if the user, for example, presses a button, the task should be interrupted. In case you do the opposite and only put something in the second statement but leave the first and the third one empty, you have a loop that is pretty similar to the while loop because basically you just have a condition and the loop will run until this condition is not applying anymore. So basically that's exactly like a while loop. You can put anything in the first and third statement that you want or you can leave both of them or one of them empty. But what most programmers like to do is put a declaration in the first statement so they declare a variable, the counter variable normally, and in the third statement they normally put the increment or the decrement of the variable. I also like to have the decrement or the increment inside the condition, so inside the second statement, but this is not so common. Let's recreate our scenario from before using a for loop and this time we will cheat a bit to write the zero to the console as well. To do that write for an opening round bracket and a debug lock call on our number variable. Number is still zero at the beginning and statement number one will be executed before entering the loop. That means our number variable will be zero and zero will be printed to the console. Then we will write a semicolon and statement number two will be number plus plus smaller than 10. We will write a semicolon again and statement number three we can leave empty. And then we will write a debug log call inside our code block for our for loop. Okay, let's execute this. And as you can see, the numbers from zero to 10 will be printed to the console. Now let's change our for loop to one of these classical for loops that most programmers are using. To do that, let's remove our declaration of number and we will put it inside the first statement of our for loop. The second statement, the condition, we will remove the plus plus so there is no incrementation in our condition anymore. And then we will write an smaller than or equals 10. Then in the third statement, we will write our incrementation of number. And then inside the for loop, we will still have the debug log. Let's execute this and as you can see, it works exactly like the example before. A classical use case for a loop would be to loop through an array. Loop through an array means to use all the values inside the arrays for some calculation or something else. For example, it's also okay to print all of these values to the console. That would be looping through that array. Okay, let's use our for loop to loop through our fruits array that we created in the last video. Okay, let's start. Remember, every array has a dot length attribute and inside this length attribute is saved how many values are inside the array at this moment. So let's change our condition here to numbers smaller than fruits.length. The first and the second statement can stay as they are because remember the first element inside an array is the element zero. So we need to start with zero and also we need to increment our number because otherwise we will print the same array element over and over again. We don't use smaller than or equals in this condition. And why is that? Because fruits.length is four because our array has four elements inside it. But the thing is that the array starts counting from zero with the first element. And that means that the last element is the element number three. So the element number four is not existing inside our array. And if we would try to access it because we have the smaller than equals condition, then we would get an error. Okay, now let's finish this by changing the debug log call to debug log roots square bracket open number and the closing square bracket. 
And like this, if we execute this, you can see that apple, banana, cherry and mango will be printed to the console. However, because for a programmer, looping through lists and arrays is such a standard thing to do now and you need to do it so often, most of the programming languages are supporting a shorter version to do that. And this one is called for each. To use for each, let's write for each an opening round bracket, string, root, and fruit is basically just a variable name that I chose here, in, which is a keyword, root, which is our array, a closing round bracket, and then we start a code block. Now inside this code block, we will write debug.log root. Okay, let's go over this one more time so you understand what we have done. So basically, in the for each loop, you need to define a variable first and you need to use the data type that is saved inside your array. And because we have an array of strings, we will define a variable of type string and we will give it the name and I choose the name fruit. And then every time the iteration goes one more iteration through the loop, it will get one variable or one value out of our fruits array and it will save this value inside our temporary variable fruit and then we can use this variable inside the code block below. And we will do this by writing debug log fruit. And if we execute this now and check the console, you can see that apple, banana, cherry and mango got printed again and if we double click on the line here, you can see that it got printed by our for each loop. Next, I want to talk about goto and labels. Basically, goto is based on something that was available in very low level programming already because in assembly you had the jump instructions which were very similar to goto. With goto, you can basically tell the program to go to a specific label that you defined before and start the code from there. Okay, let's use goto for the same example that we used before where we print all fruits in our fruits array. To do that, let's declare a label. We do that by writing a label name that we can choose and a column after that. Okay, and before that, we need to declare our number variable. Then directly after the label, we can do our debug log. Then we increment our number. And after that, we need to do a if condition where we check if number is smaller than fruits.length. After that, we can write go to label test because every time the number is still smaller than fruits.length, we will go to label test again and the code will be executed again. Also, we don't need to write a code block here. We can write it like that because we have only one command that should be executed if our if condition applies. And I told you in this case, you can remove the code block and you can just write the command after the if condition directly. Let me explain you one more time how this works. You write the go to command and behind the go to command, you write the label that you want to jump to. And then the execution of the program will jump to this label that we defined before and will continue the execution of the program from that label on. That means the next step will be debug log again. Okay, let's execute this. And as you can see, our fruits got printed to the console just like we expected. GoTo is very unpopular in the programming world, but I think that's complete bullshit. You can use GoTo exactly like you use everything else, but the only thing is they have some valid reasons why it's unpopular, but the valid reasons are basically if you are using something completely brain dead. But you never should use anything brain dead while you are programming. So this should also apply for everything else. And I think you can use go to if you do it with brain and if you do it sensefully in the right context. Because some of the problems with go to do actually make sense, but if you keep them in mind, it shouldn't be a problem if you use them because you will keep them in mind and you will check that it's not applying when you program with go to. So basically what the problems are is first of all, if you use go to, you can use go to many times to the same label. And then if you end up at the label, you don't know from which go to you came. And also the second thing is if you write a go to to any label that is way above in your code, you don't know where it is and you need to start searching for it. But normally you shouldn't have super long code anyways. Normally you should capsule your code in some functions and it shouldn't be very long. So normally it should not apply that you have such a long code where you need to search for the label. 
Next, I want to show you break and continue, which are basically go-tos as well, but they don't get hated because they have a clear direction. For example, break can only go from the inside of a loop to the outside. But anyways, in my opinion, it doesn't make sense to hate something that is based on something else. So basically, if you don't like go-to, then you shouldn't like break as well. Because if you like break, that basically proves that there are some senseful things that you can do with a go-to. But anyways, people are stupid sometimes. Let's talk about break and continue. So let's start with the easier concept first. So basically, break will just end a loop early. So you have a condition in your loop, for example, that is checking on some special case to occur. And if this case occurs, it will just end the loop early and it will continue after the loop. So let's revert to the for each loop that we had before and let's do a if condition inside the for each loop that checks if the fruit is banana and if that's the case we will break and we will end the loop. Now let's press start and as you can see only apple and banana got printed to the console but cherry and mango didn't get printed because the loop got ended early. The next thing that I want to show you is continue. And basically what continue does is if I use the continue command inside a loops code block, everything below that continue command inside the code block of the loop will not be executed for this iteration anymore and the command will jump to the next iteration and then the code block will start from the beginning with the next iteration and yeah, the code will be executed. But for this iteration, everything below the continue will not be executed and it will jump straight to the next iteration. Now to try this out, let's declare an integer variable called number above our loop and let's increment this variable inside our loop and if we use the if condition, so if the if condition applies, we will not use break anymore, we will switch our break to a continue and to do that just write continue like we wrote break and write a semicolon after that. But below the if condition, we will do another debug log and this time we will debug log number. And what we should see is that if the value of our fruit is banana for this iteration, then it will continue and that means it will jump to the next iteration and it will ignore the debug log of number. And as you can see when we start the program, apple will be printed. Below apple there will be the number 1 printed to the console, but after banana there will be no number printed to the console. After cherry, there will be the number 3 printed to the console because the increment happens before the continue. That means the 2 got incremented to a 3, but it didn't get printed because the continue iteration skipped the rest of the code block and directly jumped to the next iteration. And after mango, you can see the 4, so everything works as expected. Okay, and last I want to talk about these haters of GoTo or some other stuff in some programming languages, okay? And my opinion on that is that this is bullshit, okay? Just use whatever you like and whatever makes sense in this scenario, okay? Don't hesitate to use GoTo or some other stuff that is hated by some of the programmers just because they are themselves too stupid to use it in the right manner, okay? So just use whatever you want, but make it in a way that the code is performant because performance is very important for games or from everything else. Always important to keep performance in mind. Use it in a reasonable manner so it makes sense. Use it in a way that you and your partners that are working on this code can still read it one year later and understand it, okay? And don't need like one hour to read the whole code or to understand the whole code, okay? And use it in a safe and consistent manner so your code don't produces any bugs, so your code is reliable and it works properly every time. And if you follow these guidelines, I see no problem in using whatever the fuck you want for your program. Welcome to the end of this video. Hit the subscribe button to stay updated. Also, if you need some high quality assets for your game or like our channel and want to support us, feel free to check out our assets at the Unity or Unreal Asset Store. You find the link to our store pages in the description. I hope you learned something new and see you next time.